Hi, my name is Angel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are reading the Creature Feature Collection, which I didn't get to in October. I was under the impression that they were full length novels, but they're not. I think the longest one is like 59 pages, so it'll be really easy to get through them in one day. Also, we're gonna ignore this thing on my face. My skin has been breaking out and I have no idea why. But to start this off, I wanted to sit down with you guys because I honestly don't know which book I want to read first. We have a few different options for like the order that we can go through. So I wanted to sit down and discuss those with you. So my first idea was to just go through and decide based off of the covers which book I might like best. Then we can go through like the descriptions and decide which one I might like best. And then there's a third option as well for the order to read them in. Um, just bear with me. We're just gonna have some fun. I wanted to put all the covers in the order of like what I like best to least and the easiest way I could think of doing that would be to go on tiermaker.com. So we are here. It's not really a tier ranking. It's just kind of me saying which cover I like worst or best to least. And yeah, let's go ahead and start with that. Screen recording is going. So down here we have the six titles, Best of Luck by Jason Mott. Uh, Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix, In Bloom by Paul Tremblay, It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mallerman, The Pram by Joe Hill, and Big Bad by Chandler Baker. So we are just going to go solely off of covers for this first portion. So I think the one, oh my god, what is going on with my voice this morning? <laughs> I think the one that really stands out to me the most is probably going to be In Bloom. I don't know why, I think maybe it's the color scheme, like the water on the cover is kind of speaking to me, the little bubbles kind of alluding to maybe there's something underneath the water, so I think I like that one the best. This is really difficult, I was not anticipating this to be so difficult. Um, another one that really speaks to me is Big Bad. I think once again that might be just like the color scheme, but I also just like this hand that's scratching down and it's got some claws. So, I don't know, you can kind of, I feel like, infer some things about the story from that. So, we've got the pram, which is obviously a little pram in the woods. We have a weights in the woods, which is this bridge with these trees on the side. Ankle snatchers, which is kind of like a little peak under the bed. And then best of luck is a four-leaf clover, but if you look closely, they are actually like faces of a skull in each of the leaves. I think out of these, the one that speaks to me the most is Ankle Snatcher. I don't know, something about that little like corner of the bed and you've got a little peek underneath it. It's so spooky. It definitely like speaks to the inner child that, you know, you always get scared of something underneath the bed. So I really like that. Next, I think I'm going to put the pram just because like the dark woodsy vibe of it is really, really interesting to me and does intrigue me. Then I'm going to put best of luck because I like the inclusion of like the faces in each of the leaves, which is not something that I noticed before until I looked at it like closely, um, which leaves it waits in the woods at the bottom. Um, I don't know. There's nothing particularly speaking to me about that cover. But the interesting thing is, if we are going to order it by description of the books, then It Waits in the Woods is actually going to be at the top for me. So let me reset this. Okay, and we're back. So now we're going to tier rank them by the descriptions. So obviously it's a little bit hard to get descriptions for these because they are so short, but I just kind of picked up a few keywords from the little it's like one or two sentence synopsis so we're gonna go based off of that i already said it waits in the woods is probably gonna be at the top for me so this one has to do with haunted woods and urban legends which really speaks to me i also saw i believe it was cat chats read this in one of her recent vlogs and she listened to the audiobook and said it was actually like creeping her out and it just had me intrigued from that video so i think that one's gonna be the top as far as like interest in the actual story then i think the next one is gonna be big bad by chandler baker this has to do with an isolated farmhouse and something about wolves then i think the next one would be the pram by joe hill i don't really know anything about that except for it's like folk horror and i think it has to do with 
fatherhood i really really love full core it's one of my favorite horror subgenres so that speaks to me because of that also the creepy woods on the cover really just has my attention so the next ones we have left ankle snatchers by grady hendrix is like a boogeyman story in bloom by paul tremblay has to do with toxic algae and then best of luck by jason mott has to do with friendships and confessions so out of those, I'm honestly not sure which one <laughs> has my interest the most. Boogeyman, Toxic Algae, Friendships and Confessions. Maybe Toxic Algae because I really like when nature is kind of incorporated into horror, so we could do that. And then I think between these two, I would probably be more interested in Boogeyman and then Best of Luck will come in at the bottom. Um, the whole idea of like friendships and like confessions happening in dire situations does sound interesting to me but I think out of everything else that one is probably at the bottom for me so this is another option for the order that we could read them in okay and then our last option is to just go by how Amazon has ordered them they gave them numbers when they put them up on like Kindle Unlimited and Audible so their order goes the pram ankle snatcher it waits in the woods in bloom best of luck and then big bad at the end so do you see my dilemma i'm like i don't know which one i want to start with i think i have decided that i'm just gonna go off of the last year we did which was intrigue by description of the story which means we will start with it waits in the woods by josh mallerman which is 52 pages haunted woods urban legends I'm fascinated and I think this will be fun because we can come back at the end and then do like my actual ranking of them after I've read everything so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna start reading it waits in the woods and I will see you guys later So I finished It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mallerman. I feel like all of these are going to be really hard to rate because they are so short, but I think I'm going to try to make myself rate all of them. For It Waits in the Woods, I think I'm going to land on a four star. Basically, this is about this girl whose sister went missing three years ago in the woods where there is this urban legend of this creature that lives there. So she sets off into the woods to catch this creature possibly or just figure out what happened to her sister whether it was a person that took her or something like that and she also like has this passion for making films so she decides she's gonna film like her whole adventure so we are following her as she is in these creepy woods and trying to uncover what happened to her sister it was very very interesting i i didn't listen to the audiobook but because like the creature speaks in the book i can understand like how the audiobook could be creepy, just like listening to the things that the creature says. I thought it was fun and it was interesting. I liked that there was a little bit of like depth to the characters and like their sisterly relationship. And I really liked the creature and just the way the whole story played out. It was a little bit creepy, it had me looking over my shoulder at some points and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm gonna start Big Bad by Chandler Baker next. I think I'm gonna do the audiobook for that one because I do have some things I need to do around the house like dishes and putting laundry away. So I feel like listening to the audiobook while I do that would be a good choice. I didn't realize but when I did my ranking of like the order I wanna listen to these or read these in, I put the three longest ones first, so Big Bad I think is 59 pages, which is the longest one. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go to Dunkin' first and get a drink. I thought the free Monday drinks were only September and October, but apparently they're still going through December. So I love that because I can spend $2 and get a free iced coffee on my day off because my day off is Monday, so it works out really, really well. They also have their seasonal drinks out, which I'm very, very excited for, so I'm gonna go get a Dunkin' coffee, come back, do some stuff around the house, listen to Big Bad, and let you guys know my thoughts. So I'm back from Dunkin'. I started the audiobook um, when I went there because I live right around the corner, so I just walk and pick up my order. So I started the audiobook just to get a little ways into it and I don't know why it's saying it's going to take so long to finish it. I even have like, I think I put it on like 1.5 times speed. I never listen to audiobooks so I don't know how this is going to go because I feel like sometimes 
I just like have a hard time focusing if I'm not physically looking at the words. It just kind of goes in one ear and out the other and I'm not really comprehending what's happening. So far we have a couple that I think they run like this Airbnb in an isolated part of Eugene, Oregon. And that's really all we've got so far. I didn't get very far into it. It wasn't a long walk, but I've got my drink. I wanted to try it with you guys. So this is the spiced cookie coffee. It has brown sugar cookie syrup and vanilla. And it's supposed to have oat milk, but they were out. So I got almond milk, but I haven't tried this yet. So I want to try it with you guys. It's not bad. I just feel like the only thing I can taste is the vanilla. It's not horrible. The Okay, I don't go to Starbucks, but the only thing that I love at Starbucks is their sugar cookie latte. So I usually go like during this season, but I don't really want to support Starbucks. So I was really hoping that this would taste like similar to that and then I could just replace it, but not quite. Yesterday, I got the cold brew with the brown sugar cookie syrup and that was really good. This, I think, I don't know, maybe the vanilla is just too overpowering, or I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this place up because it's kind of a mess and listen to the audiobook and let you guys know how it goes. So I'm back. I finished all the cleaning that I had to do and I finished Big Bad. This story pretty much is following like a very, very dysfunctional family in this like isolated house and they get a strange visitor and there's a lot of secrets that come out it was interesting i did enjoy some of the horror elements there was a lot of gore and like blood and kind of crazy things happening and it really was just focused on like the family at the very heart of it this is another thing that's going to be hard about this vlog is like trying to talk about these books because they are so short so i can't give away too much without like just giving away the entire story so it's kind of hard to really talk about them in depth and tell you guys what I'm feeling. I think I'm gonna give this one three stars. There were some things I enjoyed, there were some things towards the end that I just didn't enjoy at all and I feel like, I don't know, I just, the whole story I really wasn't fully connected to. I don't know if it was the way that was written or the characters that I didn't really care for or what but I just didn't fully connect to this story so it didn't really have a big impact with me. I definitely didn't hate it by any means but I didn't particularly love it that much so I think three stars right in the middle is kind of a good rating for this one. Anyway with that being said I am gonna go do some editing and then I will start the next book and come back and talk to you guys about that one. Okay, so I did some editing, had a little Caesar salad as you guys saw, and I started listening to The Pram on audiobook. I am on chapter five now, so I think I'm like almost 40% of the way through already, and I am hooked. I really, really am enjoying this one so far. We are following a couple who had a miscarriage, and obviously, as you can imagine, that definitely deeply emotionally affected both of them, so they decided to move to a new home and kind of have like a fresh start and no longer be stuck in this place where um, you know all these horrible things happened. She had a miscarriage and then they went right into the COVID pandemic where they both got sick. So they just had a lot of like bad memories associated with the place they lived. So they moved to this new house and now we are following their relationship. I am just enjoying the main character that we're following. We're following the man in the couple. I can't remember his name and I don't want to stop to look um but i'm really enjoying like his kind of inner monologue that we're getting like his narration is very very interesting the way that it's told it definitely holds your attention there are some like humorous little bits as well so i'm very very curious to see where the story goes and i am really really into it so far so i think i'm gonna go and take a little walk down the road to the park and just listen to that while i walk and I will update you guys once I'm back and 
have my final thoughts. I know it's a little bit early, but I think so far this one is my favorite because it's definitely, it just has my attention right from the beginning. The other two that I've read so far, it took me a little while to kind of get really into it and into the story and the characters that we were following, but this one has me hooked from the beginning. So I'm really excited to keep listening. <music> the park we've only ever gone to that park during the evening and there's definitely a lot more like wildlife action during the day i saw so many more birds that we don't usually see when we go in the evening and i saw since moving to florida the first time i've seen like a fully grown adult sized alligator in the wild so that was super cool he was just sitting there and i also finished the pram by joe hill i really really enjoyed this one i think i'm gonna give it five stars it's definitely been my favorite so far it is definitely one of those books that will leave you thinking what the hell did i just read which is some of my favorites especially when it comes to horror this book was really about grief and resentment and it festering into something else it was very very interesting had a lot of folk horror elements and a lot of creepy things towards the end especially um so if you like horror that leaves you thinking what the fuck did I just read it's horror that is full horror about parenthood and has those themes of like grief I would definitely recommend this it was really fun and it's definitely been my favorite so far so the last three that we have I think are all the shorter ones so they are like less than 30 pages so I should be able to get through those pretty quickly the next one I'm gonna do is in bloom by Paul Tremblay which is about toxic algae or something so we're gonna get started with that. I'll see you guys again later. Hi, hello. I got a very exciting package in the mail from Aardvark. Um, so while I open this and show you guys the books that I got, I just wanted to let you guys know that I did finish In Bloom by Paul Tremblay. This one, I think I'm gonna give two stars. Literally nothing clicked for me. I was not connected to the story, the characters in the story, the stories that the characters were telling. Like nothing about it really connected with me and held my interest or held my attention. And I'm a little bit sad about it. But I feel like in a way it does kind of make sense because when I read The Beast You Are by Paul Tremblay, which was his collection of short stories, I think I gave the whole collection a three star and I didn't enjoy most of the stories. I feel like 80% of the stories in there read as if he forgot to finish them like there was no actual ending to the stories and I kind of felt the same way with this one especially because on top of that like I just didn't really care about the story as it was going on so that one was kind of a flop a little bit sad but we have book mail so so if you guys don't know aardvark is like kind of like a book of the month thing but they are in my opinion better than book of the month i'm actually going to cancel my book of the month but it's really frustrating because i have a credit on there and if i cancel i just lose that credit which is 18 dollars. i'm pretty sure so i kind of have to wait until there's a month where one of the picks is something that i want then i can use that credit and then cancel um i don't know it's just really frustrating but aardvark freaking kills it with all of their book selections so for this month i got two books the first one i'm so excited midnight is the darkest hour by ashley winstead i actually haven't read a book by ashley winstead but the last housewife is on my tbr this cover is just absolutely stunning and i'm so glad that i have a physical copy now so i can admire it in person also, Aardvark does super cool editions of their hardcovers, so I always love to take off the dust jacket and look at the colors. 
they posted their hints before they announced the books and they showed the colors on this one and i was obsessed and so i'm so glad that it was a book that i actually wanted so that is book number one for our from aardvark the second one is one that's been on my tbr for a very long time and it is a much bigger book than i thought it was the reformatory by tanana reeve do she is thick but she is gorgeous. I recently read The Between by Tanana Reevedu, which had been on my TBR for a very, very long time, and I ended up giving it two and a half stars. I didn't really enjoy it, but I'm really hoping that this one will still be a win for me because the story, like what it's about, sounds really, really interesting to me. It is about this boy. This is like Jim Crow era, so this boy gets sent to this reformatory, and he sees ghosts, and the ghosts start to show him different things that have happened at this reformatory before. I don't know, just the whole idea of it and the whole vibe that I feel like it will bring sounds very intriguing to me. Um, but yeah, that is a big book. Let's see. Over 560 pages I was not expecting, but let's go ahead and look at the hardcover. Once again, those colors are gorgeous. Ugh. I wish, you know, Aardvark, if you guys are watching this and you want to sponsor me, even though I don't have many subscribers, hit me up. I just love them so much, and their books feel so nice, like the quality is perfect. So these gorgeous, gorgeous books are going to go on my TBR shelf. They also included this little card. They do a different card every month. So this is the November 23 member challenge. This month, we invite Aardvark members to share a photo of their book collection, whether it's a pile on the floor or a meticulously curated room we want to see. Oh, and you can tag them on Instagram for a chance to win a free credit for next month, so that's kind of fun. Um, and then they throw in one bookmark for each book that you get. Super cute. I love the colors on these ones. Um, yeah, anyways, that was just a little intermission. I wanted to show you guys my book mail and I'm going to get back to reading. I'll probably read the last two stories before I come and talk to you again. So next up we have Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix, which is supposed to be a boogeyman story and I'm very, very excited for it. Okay, I'm back. It is now dark outside, but I finished the last two in the Creature Feature collection. I ended up just reading these like physically, not physically, but like as an ebook rather than listening to the audio and let's go ahead and talk about them, I guess. So I read Ankle Snatcher, I think it's Ankle Snatcher. I keep wanting to say Ankle Snatchers by Grady Hendrix, which is about this man who something happened with his father when he was a child and his father told him to look out for the boogeyman or the ankle snatcher that lives under his bed and now he's an adult and something happens to him and it was very interesting it had some very fun silly like horror elements as is like classic Grady Hendrix I think I'm gonna give that one a three I feel like there was just something a little bit missing like I wish we got a little bit more at the end if this one was slightly longer I think it would have been a little bit better for me but I did really enjoy it. And then we ended with Best of Luck by Jason Mott, which I think I'm gonna give a four star, 3.5 or a four, maybe a 3.75, I don't know. Um, this one is about two friends who have a conversation one night um, at gunpoint and some confessions come out some very interesting things are revealed but i can't say too much without like giving away the whole plot of the story but i really really enjoyed it i loved like the different horror elements like there was some body horror but there's also like this legend like evil thing i don't know it's very hard to talk about without giving away what the plot of the book was but that one i think i'm gonna give four stars. I did really enjoy it. So with that being said, we are back to Tear Maker and we are going to do our last little lineup of what I actually did enjoy in the order. Okay, well there's definitely one that stands out as the top and one that stands out as the bottom. So obviously my number one place is going to be the Pram by Joe Hill. That's the only one that I gave five stars. So obviously it has to go in that spot. 
Then in the last place, we're going to put In Bloom by Paul Tremblay. It's funny because I looked up like the Goodreads reviews. I just wanted to see what other people thought about this story. And so many people gave it like two star, maybe three star ratings. And a lot of people were saying it was their least favorite in the collection. So I do agree with that. So now we have our last four to sort through. We have It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mallerman, which I gave a four star. Big Bad by Chandler Baker, which I gave a three. Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix, with a, which I gave a three. And then Best of Luck, which I gave a four. This is like kind of harder than I thought it would be. I think in our fifth place, I'm gonna put Ankle Snatcher, just because it was so short that I feel like I didn't get everything that I wanted from it, but I did enjoy what was there. Um, number four, I'm going to put Big Bad. I did enjoy a lot of the horror elements in that one, even if I didn't fully connect to like the story and the characters. So now I have It Waits in the Woods and Best of Luck. Hmm. I think, oh gosh, I don't know. And it's like hard to talk about without like telling you guys what each of the stories is actually about. I think in the second place position, I am gonna put Best of Luck by Jason Mott. I don't know, I just thought that one was really fun and just the story that was told in it was really fun. Um, but I really can't say anything else. And then in the third place, that leaves It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mallerman. So very interesting compared to what my like prediction was. I don't think I predicted any of these correctly, but that's okay. It was fun. It's very, very interesting too because the top two books are from authors that I haven't read from before versus the bottom four. Well, not Chandler Baker. I haven't read from Chandler Baker, but I've read from Josh Mallerman, Grady Hendrix, and Paul Tremblay. So for them to be lower down is really interesting. Joe Hill, I know, is Stephen King's son, I believe, and I've seen a lot of his books floating around, so I may have to give some of his other books a try. Jason Mott as well, I feel like I might check out some of his books because I did enjoy the story that was told in this one. Anyway, that was our little kind of spend the day reading with me, reading these six books. I would definitely recommend all of the books in the Creature Feature Collection. I think they're all so fun. They were definitely released at the perfect time because these are very much like, I kind of wish that I had read them like on Halloween or the day before Halloween, but I had so many other books that I was reading in October that I just, I didn't have time for it but I'm really really happy that I did decide to read them after all. Anyway, with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys next time.